The following is a segment from Session 8 of the Honestly Better Mental Fitness Show. If you would like a list of all the segments and the full sessions, please visit honestlybetterfitness.com forward slash list. That's honestlybetterfitness.com forward slash list. Welcome to l Industrial Industrial's Honestly Better Mental Fitness. I'm Mike Lomber. I'm the president of l Industrial. Industrial. Standing in the middle of a breezeway in the shop in Tempe, Arizona. To get an idea of what we do behind us here. I found mental fitness a few years ago and it, it changed my life. It's changed my family's life. And now we'll bring it to all the LH Industrial and recording it. So you put it down to the rest of your hearing. Thank you for joining. So what builds strong relationships? We talked about that it starts with loving yourself and um, and what that means. And now we're going to talk about um, the things that build that bond stronger. Uh, so the first thing is simple. We can celebrations, rituals, even shared suffering, shared experiences build strong bonds between us. Uh, and there's things uh, out of that um, Gottman study. There's an interesting thing that uh, relationships need a five to one ratio of positive to negative interactions. And so uh, that's that's a, that doesn't mean like if you have you know in in one day it's it's an average over time in your marriage and your friendship if if whatever it is and positive uh, what's positive and negative interaction is uh, criticism versus praise is it oh thanks so much for taking care of that thing for me or is it oh hey uh, you know great that you took care of that thing but you forgot this thing over here um, you know it, or is it um, you, uh, they call it like bid for a function. Like, so you reach out and you you reach out to share something with your partner and they ignore you or you send an email, they, they, they don't, they don't respond. Okay, it's great. Yeah, whatever. And, and move on. You know, so it's not just uh, negative things. It's things that you reached out and it wasn't received. I would actually come back to saying it's not being seen again. Like there's something important to you and you're trying to share it and it wasn't heard. It wasn't, it wasn't seen. So uh, that idea of like five to one ratio of positive to, to negative um, interactions. Uh, rewarding the good versus uh, punishing the bad is what we're going to talk about here next. And then also going to deal with conflict and solvable versus unsolvable problems. Focusing on the positive, um, I think a big part of that re revolves around rewarding the good versus punishing the bad. And I think, I don't know exactly why, but I definitely see it as a tendency to want to point out um, the flaws. I think it's probably, there's something like inherently in our DNA that uh, it's better to uh, see something as a threat and have it be not then have it be a threat and not recognize it. So I think there's something that we're like, we're hardwired to see the negative as opposed to the positive. And an example might be, I'm walking through the jungle and there's a, a snake on the ground and I assume it's a snake and I step on it. I only have to make that mistake once. But I can, uh, because I'm bit and then I, I, I don't live anymore. Versus if I think that the stick is a snake, uh, I can keep making mistakes over and over and still live. And so, like, uh, biologically, we're, it, we're hardwired to, it's better to, to assume the worst than it is kind of to assume the best. So I think there's some things in there that are difficult to overcome. And how that shows up in relationships, someone can do 99 great things all day, but we'll point out that one thing that they didn't do. And we'll just bypass the 99 beautiful things. And then to the person, and, and you know, we in our head, um, but to the person, the only thing they hear is that negative. Well, if I, you hear the ratio of five to one again, right? If you you have a short interaction with your friend or with your coworker, or with your spouse or whatever it is, and then you hear two negative things or even one negative thing and no positive things, that starts to become your impression of the other person. And so there is a tendency, um, at least that, that I see, in people to point out the negative versus pointing out the positive. And I think there is something in us that we believe simply that that is the way to modify the behavior. And I would say punish, punish the bad versus reward the good. But all of the like psychology behavioral studies show the opposite is true. Uh, you can think of, I think an example I have in here is like uh, police and speeding tickets. Right? Like 
you know, what does getting a speeding ticket do to be to your behavior is speeding? If you're the type of person that speeds uh, or drives faster than the speed limit, it probably makes you drive slower when you think there are police around. <laughs> but the rest of the time, you'll drive whatever speed that you're going to, to drive. Uh, much more powerful is uh, reinforcing positive behavior. Then people seek that out. Like, oh, man, thank you. You you killed it on this. Like, that was so wonderful. Thank you for doing this for me. Like, that will generate more of a positive return. That person will keep doing that thing. Versus the, hey, you know you did this thing? And this thing do that like, or, or you, you forgot this thing or whatever. Like, it's in the city that punishment doesn't ever work or uh, criticism or uh, pointing out the things that are wrong. But rewarding the things and pointing out the things that someone's doing right is actually a more powerful, influential thing uh, in that relationship in there. And I'd also make it personal to you. What do you need more of your love? Uh, what do you need more of in your life? Criticism of your shortcomings or acknowledgement of the good that you're doing? What motivates you? on a daily basis. When someone comes in and acknowledges that how incredible you've done in this thing, how hard you've been trying, or when they come in there and poke at a couple of things that you're struggling with. Is it gratitude or is it resentment that really motivates you? And so to uh, enter relationships, to focus on the positive, to see the other person as um, let me put this, uh, to see the other person in the best, in the most favorable light possible. And so when they do make that mistake, they leave the dish on the counter or they're late on that project or whatever it is. I mean, to approach them with um, uh, in verse, uh, working together versus an adversarial relationship. So you're coming in there to criticize them, they're going to be like, oh, you know, I tell you left the dishes out. I, I know how tired you are. I took care of them today. Um, is there something I can do to help remind you later to to not leave this or to you were late on this project? Like, uh, how are you doing? Are you, are you doing OK? Normally, you're never late. Uh, what, what's going on? Anything I can do to help support you? Like that's working together versus being, you know, uh, being or uh, I guess the, the language would be uh, turning towards somebody versus turning against you know, working together versus adversarial in there. Um, and also, you know, this links in with uh, focusing on the positive as being a more beneficial thing to relationships than uh, pointing out the negative or the things that are missing. Uh, it would go into the love languages in there and make sure you are appreciating them in that a language that they can hear. So some people um, receive appreciation differently. Sometimes it's it needs to be in front of the whole company or you know these big displays and other people just like quiet acknowledgement um some people um, like to have um, I, I guess this is new this goes back to knowing the other person knowing what is going to be a uh, a quote reward to them right how, how do they receive appreciation love affection admiration that sort of stuff is it um I appreciate you doing this thing so much for me. And so getting them a foot rub at the end of the night, like, is that how, is that how they receive love, you know, through affliction or touch or other things like that? Mm -hmm.